Hello, everyone. Thank you for making the time today. My name is Jason Katsaftis. Uh, we're going to present today talking about the future of Oracle's PeopleSoft. Okay, great. Uh, great, great group of um, companies that we're seeing on the webinar today. Uh, some local to my area. I'm based up in uh, Sonoma County, California. Um, I'm joined today by Roland. Uh, Roland is our global sol uh, service solutions architect focusing on PeopleSoft and J.D. Edwards. Uh, he spent nearly 20 years at Oracle um, and you know, has a depth of technical knowledge. Um, and we're going to get into some detail today about PeopleSoft, particularly 9.2, um, and, and what customers are doing and seeing around this new continuous update model. Uh, I've been with uh, Ramini Street for a couple of years and spent over 20 years working with Oracle as well uh, from an engineering and product management perspective. So just a quick background for those of you who are not familiar with Ramini Street. Uh, we are the world's leader in independent support for enterprise software. Uh, that includes not just Oracle applications, which we're talking about today, um, and even beyond PeopleSoft for Oracle applications, but also SAP, um, the, a lot of the world's leading databases and uh, SaaS technologies such as Salesforce. Uh, Third-party support, for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept, uh, does not replace the people that you have or the partners you use and, and, and integrators that you have with Oracle, we directly replace the elective uh, support ma and maintenance that you pay Oracle for uh, every year. And what we do just very uh, simplistically is we take that maintenance fee and we reduce it by 50%. And that's a guaranteed uh, number. But then the savings go far beyond that. And we'll talk a little bit about this today in terms of we support things beyond what Oracle does traditionally, and help you avoid having to spend money on things that are driven by the vendor's timetable. For example, as we're going to talk about today, applying continuous PeopleSoft updates. And to date, over uh, we've saved clients over $4 billion. Gartner just came out with a great 2020 report on how to use third-party support to help you get some balance back in your relationship with Oracle whether it's running uh, PeopleSoft internally deployed or even as you consider moving to the cloud. We just put a press release on RaminiStreet.com about this, and you can download that Gartner report. Um, it talks a lot about a lot more than third-party support. It's really a great piece, and we encourage you to take a look at that. So we're going to talk um, a little bit over the next 20 minutes about uh, the PeopleSoft roadmap. And then we're going to get into some of the great questions that you guys sent in ahead of time. A lot of questions on the cloud, which was very interesting. And so we're going to talk about that as well. Um, but essentially, there's been a big change in, in how Oracle's delivering and supporting uh, enterprise applications, particularly PeopleSoft, with this new model called continuous delivery. So those of you who are running PeopleSoft today, um, Roland and I go to the events like Reconnect and Collaborate, and we talk with many of you. And what we found is, you know, the vast majority of PeopleSoft customers out there have already moved to 9.2 for at least some of their modules or are in the process of doing so. And the reason is, if you look at this slide, every version um, behind uh, PeopleSoft 9.2 is no longer fully supported by Oracle. It's in sustaining support. So for those of you who haven't upgraded today, you may be self-supporting your environments, maybe not you know, having to use Oracle support. You might be paying extra to get tax legal and regulatory updates. Those are some of the things that we can help you alleviate with third-party support. But for those customers that have gone to 9.2 or moved to 9.2, we're going to talk in depth today about really thinking critically about this continuous update model, what it's costing you, and what it's giving you. And Oracle, you know, even provides guidance on this that says, you know, this model does not come without cost. Um, you know, while you may think of it as an easier model compared to upgrades, the cost that you're applying to keep up with these Oracle updates has to be really thought through. So the simple conversation we have with many CIOs today that are running PeopleSoft 9.2 or in the process of moving to that is the following. You know, the first thing is, you're going to be asked basically for the next 10 years to stay on this Oracle roadmap of applying PeopleSoft updates. And these updates come out several times a year. They require infrastructure to test and apply and deploy them. Now, one of the things that we've heard and seen in some of the surveys from other PeopleSoft customers like yourselves is that almost 50% of 9.2 customers have not rolled out a single new feature 
um, that moves the needle for their business since they've moved to 9-2. And so you might not be thinking in those terms because you're, you're obviously uh, first and foremost applying the updates for you know, compliance, tax, legal, for the fixes. You should also think about, are there actual features in here that we're using? And are they moving the needle? Because they're very expensive. And again, we're, we'll walk you through um, a TCO ROI model we use consistently uh, with customers. It's been validated, um, you know, almost 100 uh, with 100 different clients and, in, and by a third party where we walk through uh, the TCO ROI model of what these updates cost. And it can cost tens of millions of dollars. Um, you, you, you know, you always think about your maintenance fee that you pay Oracle, um, which is about, you know, 20 to 22 percent of your initial license fee, right? Every five years, you're basically buying your software again from Oracle. And, and that's no different when you're in this 9-2 continuous update model. So we really like to walk through and, and really have a thoughtful conversation from a business value perspective. What are you spending and what are you getting? And, you know, help customers really think about if, if they're considering Oracle's cloud. That's going to come with added costs, particularly if you're being asked by Oracle to replace your PeopleSoft that you have today with Oracle SaaS. They've said very openly you're going to spend about three times more money with Oracle. So you really got to think that through, and, and there's a lot of better alternatives, um, you know, to this Oracle roadmap. You don't have to stay on this path if you don't want to, and that's really the premise behind the Mini Street and third-party support. We want to give you the option to not have to stay on this vendor roadmap and think about what you're spending on it and think about the new things that you can do. So let's talk a little bit more about um, applying this critical analysis to PeopleSoft 9.2 in your roadmap. So I want to start with looking at the actual uh, model of PeopleSoft and how you apply updates um, and how PeopleSoft Update Manager works and things like that. I wanted to ask Roland to kind of talk through this a little bit as well from his technical experience and, you know, what changes when you move to 9.2 and how does that process work? Um, Roland, do you want to jump in here for a few minutes and share some of your experience? Yeah, absolutely. And so for those of you that are on 9.2, you know that Oracle has now come to this continuous update model. And so what that basically means is that they're providing what they call PUM images that contain fixes, they may contain a few enhancements, um, and they may contain tax and regulatory updates. The issue with this particular model is in the past, you were probably getting maybe a patch here or there, and then you were doing an upgrade. In this particular model, it's a continuous update that you have to take uh, in order to stay compliant on a yearly basis. So um, this takes time and effort. So the basic questions you have to ask yourself are, why am I required to do this? What am I getting out of it? Is there any new functionality? We ask prospects and customers continually, are you getting any value out of what is being delivered in those images? And typically the answer is maybe, but most likely not because what Oracle delivers is very generic in nature. So there's a cost associated with even taking something that might be there. You have to test it. You have to validate that it's going to work for your business. Then you're going to deploy it. And then what you're going to have to do is roll that functionality out. And so that takes time, effort, and could be a very significant uh, resource uh, drain within your organization in order to take on these images as they are released by Oracle. Yeah, that's great, Rowan. And the other thing I'll add is, you know, you have your PeopleSoft applications. Your IT teams will tell you, IT teams will tell you, you also have your people tools. And there's an interrelationship between these image updates from 9.2 and your people tools. So you also have to think about you know, as I apply image updates, I also might have to upgrade and keep my people tools in sync with those two things as well. And, and to Roland's point, this requires a dedicated infrastructure, process, people, and, and, and so forth. And, you know, looking at what you're actually spending and what you're getting for that is a very, very important thing. A simple question to ask is, you know, what was the last feature we deployed that really moved the needle? Did it cut costs? Did it drive revenue? Or did it make us more competitive? And if it didn't do one of those three things, you're probably mostly applying these updates for support reasons. So, Roland, do you want to talk about, you know, we went in a little bit deeper and listened to what some of the customers are saying at these events um, and actually did our own analysis 
of 800 of these updates and walk through that? What, you know, maybe some of the things that we found and, and discovered. Yeah, so again, one of the things that you have to consider is the fact that there's a lot that gets delivered, but again, what is it that they're actually delivering? So we did an analysis of over 30 of the palm images, and what we found was that 80% of those um, did not contain anything for a particular module. So where they may be delivering something in the financials area or maybe in the human capital management area, it may not be specific to you or there may not be anything there for you whatsoever. Only about 5% were deemed significant. Um, if you look at that in context, it means that there's nothing that's there that's going to really transform your business to make you either more efficient or affect your bottom line. Most of the updates um, that were being developed and rolled out are related to Fluid. And if you're not familiar with Fluid, for those that are not on 9.2, this is a way to display a page on any type of device. And so what they're rolling out are these generic one-size-fits-all fluid pages. Um, and in essence, you have to deploy those. And in most cases, what we're finding, we'll show you an example of this later, is that most people and most customers are actually taking that and doing that configuration, that development on their own. The other piece of the puzzle is that 20% uh, of those images contain tax and legal and regulatory updates. And those are, you know, necessary to remain compliant. Uh, one of the interesting things when you're looking at third-party support, and especially with Romini Street, is we do all of that for you. So we provide all the financial tax and regulatory updates, all the uh, HCM tax and regulatory updates, and we do that uh, across 240-some countries and specific to you. So what we're finding is a lot of people are just kind of maintaining where they are. A lot of our customers that have come to us have archived, you know, maybe some of the tools, releases, et cetera, possibly for future use. Um, and, and, and so you have to, again, consider what is really going on here? What am I getting for all the dollars that I'm paying? And is it pertinent to me? And as Jason mentioned, is it moving the needle uh, within, my organ within your organization? Thanks, Roland, and that's a great point. You know, when we talked to Kyle Sarah, the client shown here, when you come to third-party support today, whether or not you're on 9.2, you could be on 9.1, you have license rights to not only the 9.2 software, but all of the currently released PUM images, which there are over 30 of today, you can archive those with the PUM tool and bring those with you to third-party support and then apply them later. And we have, um, you know, many clients that do that. So you're not leaving that... Uh, you know, acquired investment behind, you know, you can bring over 30, uh, 30 updates, 800, you know, uh, 30 images, 800 updates with you and apply those later um, if you see fit. But the thing to think through and, you know, Oracle's done an interesting job with the marketing on this is, is this really a better model than what we had before with forced upgrades? So traditionally in the past, before this continuous update model, Every four to five years, you would have to upgrade to, to maintain Premier support. And this was really the traditional reason so many customers came to Ramini Street is they just didn't want to do that, uh, incur that cost, because um, they didn't see the business case to move to the next major release. And um, there were sometimes options to buy extended support for a period of time, but eventually you were going to hit sustained support. And, you know, we would see, uh, you know, if customers paying a million dollars in maintenance to Oracle, that can add up to, you know, 10 to 20 millions of dollars if you stay on this PeopleSoft upgrade roadmap. Well, now, as Roland talked about, you know, Oracle says you, you'll never have to upgrade again because there is no PeopleSoft 9.3 on Oracle's roadmap. However, you do have to apply updates. And the cost of those updates is essentially the same as applying an upgrade. The difference is you're not doing, getting the right to choose that every four or five years. You now have to do that continuously. You have to do it, um, apply these updates, you know, typically at least every year. I mean, Oracle recommends a gold copy uh, full update once a year in their PeopleSoft documentation. And in between those points, you may be applying updates, you know, that are released about quarterly. So, if an update takes, you know, ask your IT teams, how long does an update take? If it takes, you know, 10 to 12 weeks, 
you could essentially be applying these all the time. And um, the cost of that is, again, very, very significant. And the cost comparison to third-party support is something that we think is attractive for you to look at. I wanted to go into a little bit more detail on what Roland talked about, because this comes up a lot. You know, when we talk to the IT teams um, at a lot of companies that are running PeopleSoft 9.2, uh, you know, they might have come back from ReConnect or Open World. And, you know, there's a general feeling that Oracle's going to come out with something later in the next uh, PeopleSoft update that we're going to lose out on. And there's a feeling of, of, of missing out on something. So one of the things we wanted to talk to you about is, you know, again, we did the historical analysis of over 800 updates. And as Roland mentioned, over half of those, um, in addition to 90% of them providing no updates for one or more image, over ha about half of those were simply tax legal and regulatory or fluid related. Now, we then looked at, you know, wh what are some of the leading innovators out there on 9.2 doing? At Collaborate last year, Oracle actually hands out awards on this. So they, they will announce uh, what's called the PeopleSoft Innovator Awards. And they look at customers running PeopleSoft like yourself. And what are they doing? And as you can see from the, the selection of, of the uh, Innovator of the Year Awards, the biggest, you know, lion's share of, of uh, quote-unquote innovation was really applying the fluid to their environment or uh, simply lifting and shifting their PeopleSoft into the cloud. And the point we wanted to make here is both of these things can be done uh, very effectively on Rumini Street and third-party support. You can keep your PeopleSoft applications and move it to AWS or Azure, for example. We've had many customers do this. You can selectively deploy new SaaS applications as well. Um, now, from a fluid perspective, as, as Roland talked about, you know, this is a technology that's been out there for a while. Um, Oracle isn't, this isn't a new technology they're providing you. It's something you have. And in a lot of cases, the innovator here is you. It's not really Oracle. They're not giving you something new that automates something in a better or efficient way, right? They're delivering you the content of the images. But what we've seen with a lot of customers is they're building their own fluid pages themselves. And in fact, one of the innovator of the year awards uh, last year for PeopleSoft was a PeopleSoft 9.2 customer, uh, Susan G. Komen. And for those of you who aren't familiar with them, uh, they're in the breast cancer research um, area. And they actually uh, rolled out uh, a whole set of new fluid capabilities globally for their organization. Um, it helps with their volunteer staff and others. And the point we wanted to make is all of this was done uh, while this particular Oracle customer was a Ramini Street client. They've been our client since 2013. So you can absolutely continue to leverage 9.2 and innovate and use Fluid um, and win awards from Oracle, right, for innovation uh, while on third-party support. But while you're doing that, you're getting a substantial amount of savings on the back end to innovate in other areas of the business that you might need to. So that's, you know, kind of the segue to the next area to think about and where a lot of the questions came in today, you know, what are some of the things that we can do if we're on 9.2? Okay, there is no 9.3, but we're not really feeling that the updates from Oracle are going to move the needle for the business. You know, what's next? And we might not be ready to go to Oracle's cloud because as we mentioned, you know, um, from a SaaS perspective, the cost is, is going to be significant according to Oracle, um, but also from an infrastructure as a service perspective, AWS and Azure are, you know, right now far outpacing Oracle. If you look at Gartner Magic Quadrants, you know, they're in the top right, Oracle's in the bottom left. They're, they spent over $70 billion last year on R&D uh, and, and, and for infrastructure as a service. So if you're going to lift and shift PeopleSoft to the cloud, you know, you should really think about putting it in an in a infrastructure that's investing and that can sustain that business. And Oracle today has struggled uh, to be candid in the cloud area, uh, particularly SaaS and infrastructure as a service. So we have, you know, many, many people soft clients today, hundreds of them uh, running a variety of releases from 9.2 all the way back. Um, but, you know, several of these companies have been able to do some great, great and innovative things while on third-party support. 
One of the things I want to mention that comes up a lot with PeopleSoft, and Roland touched on it, was tax legal and regulatory updates. Lifeway was very concerned about that, leaving Oracle no longer having access to those. When they came to Ramini Street, what they found was not only did they get tax legal and regulatory updates, but they got them in a faster and more precise manner than they were used to with Oracle because when we onboard clients, we actually understand your full environment. We have to. We need to know all your applications, all your infrastructure, your database releases, your hardware, your OS. And what that means is when we deliver a tax legal and regulatory update to you from our uh, TL&R department, we make sure that update is designed for your environment. What you get historically from the vendor is kind of a bulk update. Um, and second, we've been, uh, in many cases, putting out the updates before uh, Oracle has. One Touch Payroll was a great example last year um, that for Australia uh, that applied to PeopleSoft and SAT. We were the first vendor to release those updates. So tax legal and regulatory really should not be a reason not to come to third-party support. Um, you know, from a cloud perspective, we've had many clients uh, move to the cloud on third-party support. And, but the key is to really go out and do your analysis of all the cloud options out there and pick the right one. The first thing to think about is what's the right cloud model, right? You can either keep PeopleSoft as you have it and lift it and shift it to infrastructure as a service and get out of the hardware business, right? You may not see value anymore in upgrading your storage and your operating systems and your hardware and paying people to do that and paying for the infrastructure to support that. You might want to just buy that as a service, right, where the, the IaaS vendor will do that for you. And that will make you more efficient to roll out new applications, right? Some other customers do want to go to SaaS. They find that there might be a module in SaaS that um, is equal to or better than what they have today, and they want to have that turnkey kind of automatic up, upgrade of that moving forward. We've had clients, you know, do both of those situations. And, again, we've had a lot of clients look at the cloud and go, it's just not quite there yet for us, for PeopleSoft. What we have runs our business very well, and we don't see the ROI to move to the cloud yet, but we know with Ramini Street, I'm supported for at least 15 years, and I have time to make that decision, and I can make it when I want to. So, you know, we have over 3,000 clients that have come to us. As I mentioned, many of those are PeopleSoft, and we gave a couple of examples. Wanted to make sure we left about 10 minutes um, for Q&A as well. Uh, where Roland and I can answer some of these questions. They were really great. And again, if we don't get to some of them, we will follow up with you with an email uh, to answer them as well. Um, so one of the first questions was, um, and we covered this a little bit, what's the target date when 9.2 will go into sustaining support? And what are the benefits of moving to a cloud version in the next uh, three to four years? So uh, for 9.2 right now, um, Oracle has uh, put this in a continuous update mode. So right now, they are saying that Premier support is offered through at least 2030, and that's a rolling date. So there's a 10-year rolling window on that. So right now, we're in the year 2020, so you're supported Premier support through 2030. In 2021, you'll be supported through 2031 and et cetera, as long as you keep paying your maintenance fee. So there is no sustaining support uh, deadline for 9.2, but as we talked about in this webinar, you have to pay and keep up with your updates along the, along the lines of that. Uh, the benefits of moving to a cloud version, again, it would depend on, the, on the, uh, the cloud version that you choose between infrastructure as a service and um, software as a service. We at, at Ramini Street, when we go talk to clients, we have a cloud advisory uh, service within Ramini Street. We very proactively recommend starting with infrastructure as a service. And we specifically work with very heavily with AWS uh, and Azure. And, and the reason is the following. We, we think and believe that, first of all, you, know, the, you want to start going into the cloud very carefully. Uh, Gartner's put out a lot of information on this. The, the final costs when you move to the cloud compared to what you do today are very hard to predict. And a lot of companies end up paying two to three times more than they even thought from their cloud contract right, once they move into the cloud and start to ingest the full operational model. So by moving to infrastructure as a service, you get to take a step into the cloud, but keep your ERP software you have, keep your customizations, not give those up for SaaS, right, because when you move to SaaS, you're essentially getting rid of your licensing, 
you're renting your application from the vendor. It's a very extreme move to go that far into the cloud. If you start with infrastructure as a service, you get the cost savings of getting out of the hardware business, the data center business. You can use the cost savings of third-party support as well and get the one plus one benefit there and still move to SaaS later. You know, so that, that's kind of what we see as a, as a good way to do to start there. Um, so next question, what's the direction of PeopleSoft and is Oracle planning on releasing 9.3? And how will Oracle quote unquote force clients to the cloud? Um, Roland, do you want to talk about, you know, Oracle's PeopleSoft roadmap? I know you've been uh, heavily involved in the user groups and things like that. And, and you know, what's planned? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So Oracle has stated, <clears throat> excuse me, that 9.2 will be the last major code line for PeopleSoft. So there will be no 9.3. As mentioned before, as we talked through this webinar, they're releasing these PUM images. And basically, to stay current uh, on support, you have to be on the latest and greatest. So the answer to the question is there will be no 9.3. As far as you know, the benefits of moving to the cloud, things of that nature, again, what we're finding with a lot of our customers, and we have customers across the board dating back to the early releases of PeopleSoft, they're very, very happy with their application. They are um, you know, innovating on their own, as we mentioned, with the Susan G. Komen Foundation as an example. The fact of the matter is, is that they can't force you to do anything. With Rumini Street, we guarantee you in our contract that we will support you on your version for up to 15 years. So there is no forced upgrade. We're not going to tell you to go to the cloud. You have an option. And so that's why a lot of customers and prospects are coming to Remini Street because they don't want to be in that position to have to go through that transition um, and all the costs that are associated. No one wants to go through another implementation. And moving to the cloud, in essence, is a rip and replace. So hopefully that answers the question, Jason. Yep, great. Thanks, Roland. Yeah, and then kind of related to that was another question. What, so what's prompting customers on 9.2 to go to the cloud? The biggest thing we've seen is really Oracle sales. Oracle will come in and offer um, cloud credits, um, cloud incentives, and it's really not about, in a lot of cases, the business cases there. It's that Oracle's offering an incentive to move to the cloud. The thing I'll say about incentives, like any incentive, right, is it's temporary. So if Oracle comes in and says, well, we will offer you um, a proportion of your existing unused shelved licensing, turn those into cloud credits, which you then can consume and move to our cloud uh, for a certain period of time, be mindful of what you're signing up to. Um, we've seen a lot of clients that have gone into these contracts, moved into the cloud, and initially, you know, experienced some of the um, benefits of those of those incentives. But once those incentives expire, um, you know, all bets are off, right? You're you're now running in the Oracle cloud, and your maintenance and your total cost is going to be revisited. The second thing we'll say is that the support experience. You're, you're leveraging the same support team at Oracle that you use today. So there isn't a new and enhanced um, you know, support experience that you're going to receive from Oracle by moving into the cloud. So just be mindful of that as well. And understand also that, um, as I mentioned before, the, the final costs when you're in the cloud are very, very hard to predict. So we very much caution against getting locked in too soon and starting carefully and then, you know, moving to the cloud when it makes sense. And I want to, you know, be clear. We have clients that have deployed um, Oracle SaaS. We have some that have chosen a one or two modules of PeopleSoft and said, you know, we think we're going we're gonna to dip our toe in the water and try out Oracle SaaS. But they kept the lion's share of what they have inside their data center and, and you know, to start to feel it out and see how that goes. Um, so the next question is, you know, what's an option if we decide not to go to the cloud? What are the downsides of staying on with PeopleSoft for the next 10 years? You know, the, I think the answer to that is none. And to Roland's point, it doesn't have to be 10. It could be 15. PeopleSoft's a great product. Um, you know, a lot of the people at Ramini Street are from PeopleSoft, uh, including our executive staff. Um, you know, they've worked with it. They were at Oracle helping build it. 
um, you know, it's a fantastic product and, and it runs your business well and you've, you might have even customized it, you know, particularly for your industry and, and your needs. And we don't see any reason why um, you shouldn't be able to run that, you know, for the foreseeable future. And that's the majority of what our clients do. They, they run what they have, it runs their business, and then they use the savings to pick and choose what they need to innovate, um, what they in, need to innovate in next. Um, next question is, will Oracle support PeopleSoft past 2030? Um, uh, and are there any instances where companies have moved back from the cloud to an on-premise solution? So I think Roland answered the first question before, which is, um, yes, if you're on 9.2, uh, Oracle is offering a rolling 10-year window of premier support in the continuous update mode. Yep. So that will continue. And again, with Ramini Street, it's a it's a 15-year window, uh, regardless of what you're running on any release, uh, including customizations and so forth. Um, instances of where companies have moved back from the cloud to an on-premise solution. Um, we've so I think the first answer to that is I've only seen that happen where the customer was on infrastructure as a service and they they said, you know what, this just isn't working out. The, 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 the quality uh, is not there um, and uh, we're going to move back into our own data center. There have been some examples out there uh, in the press um, from an Oracle perspective on this where customers were not happy. Um, I have not seen or heard of a customer going to SaaS and then coming back. And, and the reason has to do with what Roland said. You know, once you move to SaaS, you, you've given up your existing licenses. You're now renting uh, software as a service from the vendor. And yeah, your data is still there, right? Your data has been migrated into the cloud. But to reverse that, to go back to your data center, you're basically re-implementing PeopleSoft from the scratch. And we just, I haven't heard of many customers do that. Um, and I think there's a reason for that. I think it's probably very cost prohibitive to do, but also we just haven't seen many customers uh, rip and replace PeopleSoft to SaaS in general. And I think, you know, the market data, the market data supports that. So again, if you're, if you're concerned, and that's a great question, right? If you're rightfully concerned about the cloud being the right thing, you're concerned about the unknown. I think the you know a good way to approach it is to start with infrastructure as a service and and um, you know get used to get get comfortable and then progressively moved into the cloud versus going all at once. So we hit the bottom of the uh, half hour here. There's a couple of more great questions we're going to follow up with in email. Um, this webinar will be archived and on demand. So if people in your organization were not able to make it today, please forward it on to them. And we'll be happy to answer any other questions as well after. But thanks, everybody, for attending today. And thank you, Roland, as well. And uh, we hope to talk to you soon.